It's not just enough to prove that you can beat the ultra bosses in Roguelands. They are hard by design, that's kind of why they exist. They're an end game option for people who have played the game for a long time. In fact, having to earn the kill, earn the fight itself by getting a thousand kills of any enemy within uh, that particular level, for example, is just one way to slow down progress uh, so that new players aren't able to access these bosses. It just so happens that their gear is some of the best in the game, if not the very best in each of their own appropriate classes. Um, all actually superseded by the Exodus armor set, which is the, the best available stats for, of any item in the game. Helmet and armor both offering incredible numbers uh, onto any build. So, the bottom line here is that I want to show the strategies, how to beat these enemies, not just that I can. Uh, I've seen other videos of people obviously going forward and beating these bosses time and time again. Uh, I've done it on stream with, with viewers, with you guys, so obviously it's not impossible. Uh, but if you're looking to solo these enemies, of course you're going to need something a little bit more significant than just dumb luck. Uh, null damage potion and uh, some like heavy hitting weapons, although those things are, you know, completely useful. As you can see here, the the fell bug itself is kind of bugged. Um, sometimes it just doesn't do anything, so it, it becomes the easiest ultra boss in the entire game, because it's just so simple to beat when it's not even fighting back. It's just swirling around you, and if you run into its hitbox, like actually run into the enemy, it does like one damage. It does so little damage, it's actually almost inexcusable. Uh, but it's been really useful for me and so, some other players, of course, to be able to get the Felbug armor set. And the Felbug armor set drops from this guy, it has decent stats. Um, I like it a lot, it's on this build I'm actually using right now. But as you can see, that this boss doesn't pose much of a threat. Uh, what I've done here is killed it a couple of times and then gone through until I've found a point where I can actually fight it and see what its own attacks actually are. So what I'm going to do now is cut to that footage, you'll see some of the attacks and I'll go in depth with them afterwards uh, and we'll have a bit of a discussion about what he can actually do. So, I finally get to a fight where the boss is actually going to try and attack me. Uh, this is hugely beneficial because it means you can actually see the attacks as they come out. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to like do a few pauses and things as things go around. Um, because some of the attacks have sound cues, some of them have different effects but look the same. Uh, and there's a few different things uh, that you might pick up just as you're watching me fight it overall. Uh, but I will say, I'm playing extremely clumsily, almost on purpose here. I'm walking into some bits and pieces on purpose to show how much damage they're taking. Um, such as this meteorite just to the left. Uh, but as you can imagine, um, I'm just trying to get a few shots where I can show you the kind of things this boss can put out when it actually functions correctly. Um, the damage it does, again, the model does like one or two damage. I always have a null damage potion on, so I'm never actually sure. Um, but between that and, of course, using bubble and stuff, the damage I'm taking isn't going to kill me, unlike with a lot of the other ultra bosses where they do 10,000 or 5,000 damage, whatever it may be. Uh, but here we go. The first thing I'm going to look at properly are these meteorites. So, uh, the meteorites that spin around, um, they're actually just weird circular meteors, the kind that you find on this level to begin with. Uh, but they have two prongs, uh, one on either side, and as it spins, these things have like a really awkward hitbox. Uh, it cuts off a lot of, uh, you know, avenues and alleyways for you to actually, you know, stand around and fight in. Uh, my best advice for trying to get rid of them, as opposed to walking into them like I do, uh, is to actually just move away from them. Um, this level, Hollow Caverns, isn't exactly difficult, and I find that the boss generally tends to put these up the place where he first fights you, and if you kite it away from this area, they tend to just stop spawning. Um, I don't really know the mechanics of it all, because I haven't fought this boss enough times while it's actually been uh, an active boss, rather than just a, a big sponge for damage. Uh, but these meteorites are of some threat, uh, and the best advice I can give you is to run away, just like I'm doing right here. So the next attack this thing's going to have are these kind of orbs that it fires off. You'll see them multiple times throughout the fight, and a lot actually in this section. Uh, there's two types of them, the types that fly at you, and some of them that may move slightly and then don't move at all. Um, they both do the same amount of damage, it's exactly the same projectile, but some of them are stationary for some reason, and some of them are mobile. I'm not sure exactly why this is the case, I'm not sure you know, why they exist and look exactly the same and do different things, I'm not sure if it's a bug, I'm not sure if it's intended, uh, but they are both quite heavily damaging things. Without the null damage potion, they do like 99 damage, these things uh, have the potential to one or two shot you in theory uh, so my best advice for this genuinely is to if you're genuinely you know in the range to be able to move around the boss and dodge its attacks um, you might be okay 
if you don't have any other choice, dash into the boss. This is probably going to change in future if uh, the, the mob, like its actual model, starts to do additional damage or starts to do uh, appropriate damage, really, for an ultra boss on contact. You might find this isn't great and you just want to keep a decent range from it. But for me, I've just found that dashing into the boss is actually safer because you, you are guaranteed to take damage, but you're going to take one or two rather than 50 or 100. So the final attack you will have seen a few times in this video so far as well. It fires off these tiny slimes. These things are capable of actually dropping the Slimecraft Helm if you guys are interested. Uh, it is just a regular slime enemy except it flies at you, which is kind of weird. Uh, in any case, they don't do that much damage on contacts. They just fly around to chase you a little bit. I don't really see these spawn very often on screen, but it happens to spawn from the backside of the boss. Uh, they seem to be like weird babies that can pop out of its bum and they chase you around a bit. It's really bizarre, a really strange mechanic, but they are what they are. <laughs> So this is something I missed initially, and I've come back just to add it in before this video goes live. Uh, basically, there is the chance of this monster poisoning you, and this is something I missed because I always use the monster trainer. It's really valuable in these fights overall, uh, but this monster's uh, slimes can poison you, and I know the model can poison you, as you can see in the background round about now. Um, I can't say for sure whether or not the meteorites do, but the orbs definitely don't. Uh, but of course, these two things are adding an extra layer of difficulty, so of course, if you are going into this without using the monster, of trying to uniform or resist poison mods um, then of course bring some anti-poison potions with you as well they are going to be really really helpful here so for this section things have got a little bit quieter and i've done that for a very specific reason and that is the sound cues are hugely useful when actually trying to fight this boss uh, of course there's the groan that one there as soon as the boss spawns uh, but also the attacks have particular noises So you've heard the noises in action, but I want to bring some attention into what they actually do. The first noise, it's kind of a squishy sound. Um, th this is basically what happens when it lays something. The two types of things it can lay are obviously the, the slimes that fly towards you and the meteorites that just stay in place and spin. These two are the least threatening of its attacks, and if you hear that noise, it's probably a good thing. However, I do feel they're not as frequent as the second noise. And this one's more of like an aquatic washing sound. Uh, this one, it obviously, it's in reference to the orbs. Um, it makes the same sound whether or not it's firing them towards you or just leaving them in place. Uh, but if you hear this noise, it's probably time to start dodging. Although these are also easy to see because the projectiles layer on top of the boss's model rather than underneath, as is the case with the other attacks. So that's everything the Felbug has to offer. I don't think this boss is too hard. I'd go as far to say that even when it's functioning correctly, it's the easiest ultra boss to fight, mainly because kiting and fighting this thing is the best strategy that you have. Staying in a corridor like I am here with a ton of spinning meteorites is a terrible idea, and being able to make your distance from this and, and stay away is going to make this, this fight incredibly simple. The orbs are the only thing that really you know, have any consequence at that point. I'd say bringing Dark Fire or Mega Slash or something to, to clear the slimes off of you without ever having to focus on them will make it a lot easier for you as well. The major tips, as this will be the case for many of the Ultra Bosses, is bring an all damage potion, bring more than you're going to need. The same goes for like health packs and elixirs, bring more than you think you're ever going to need in these fights because they can go on for a lot longer than you think. And of course having too many is better than having too few. In general, Put the priority on dodging the orbs, those are the things that are likely going to kill you. Keep your distance from the boss, make sure you stay away from the meteorites from the boss itself and from the level, because they can restrict your movements. But overall, just take it easy, approach it with a level head, and all being well, you'll come out on top. Again, this is still an ultra boss, it's not meant to be simple, it's meant to take a long time, it's made for end game characters. But it is the easiest, in my opinion, of the bunch so far. And I do want to make videos on all the other seven, because there are eight altogether right now. And probably all there ever will be, to be honest. But I do want to make more videos on the others, so please let me know if there's anything you want to change in these videos. Uh, and hopefully you learn something. That's what I really want to bring across. Because uh, I want to show the strategies, not just that I can beat these things. And I want you guys to learn alongside me. 
But that really is everything I want to say on this video. Uh, obviously, if you guys are going to follow this advice and try and kill the Felbug for yourself, please go in prepared, use the advice I've given, and hopefully you'll be just fine. I am going to wish you all luck if you are going to grind out any of the Ultra Bosses for the drops, because the drops themselves, when they do come along, please don't turn your nose up to a common one, because you only lose out on 9 stats overall, and they're already astronomically better than anything else in the game. So, genuinely good luck. I hope you get something. I hope you get something you really want, and uh, hopefully you don't die. <laughs> But uh, thank you so, so much for joining me on this one. Please look after yourselves, folks, because I would like to see you again. But until then, have fun, and bye for now.